It's one of those mornings where everything is just loud. And you know, when you do screen capture recordings or any kind of video recordings, two most important aspects is light and the sound. And when you have a lot of noise, it does interfere. So if you hear the birds chirping outside, they're very happily, gaily and larking away, then just enjoy the spring that we are experiencing here in the South at this moment. Good morning then, or maybe when you are watching this, it's evening. This is JP here at Websites for Beginners. And we are looking in this playlist at plugins for Elementor. The great thing about, I would say 90% of these plugins is that you can use it with the Elementor free version. And if you want extra additional add-ons for your posts and your WooCommerce and dynamic content, then that will also bring a lot to your Elementor Pro. And these plugins or add-ons come from a company called Croco Block. Look at the description below. And this group of plugins is called or elements is called Jet Elements. And today we'll be looking at the Instagram element. Who doesn't like Instagram? Anyone who doesn't take photos. Yeah, Instagram is one of those things I often hear people tell me, I don't see the point in using it. But the people who do use Instagram and use it well are very happy with it. So let's look at the Instagram widget that is included with Jet Elements. And you will find it if you go to your widgets and elements. Uh, scroll down here to Jet Elements. And then here you go. You'll find the Instagram. Let's drag it in and see what it does. There are two options that you can opt for in your Instagram widget. And the first one is what to display. Tagged photos. Now, tag photos, they are not your photos. They are the photos that have been tagged recently on Instagram. Now, usually when we tag a photo with a hashtag, we use this little symbol, the hashtag in front of it. But read very carefully, enter without the hashtag symbol. Do not be the fool like me and just enter that hashtag symbol and waiting and nothing is happening. It clearly says there, do not enter it or enter without the hashtag symbol. So now you have to have a little bit of an understanding about hashtags and then you will understand how this works. So for example, I took a photo, I put it in black and white, and then I will make a hashtag black and white. There are many kinds of black and white hashtags, so you have to choose one that suits you. For example, I'm going to type in black and white, and of course, there is no spacing. And then you will see now what it will do is go find the latest images on Instagram that have been tagged with black and white hashtag, and they will display them here. Let's look at something else. I'm going to type in South Africa. Let's do South Africa and see what it does for South Africa. Yeah, uh, mm, nice selection. I like it. Hello, South Africa. That one over there is probably where is that Cape Town? Yeah, this one in the middle Cape Town. Ah, let's not get sidetracked. I almost think three of these photos are from Cape Town. This one probably from Sun City or one of those places. Let's choose something else. Norway. Lately, I was there and let's not get sidetracked by traveling the world with this one. Okay, Norseman, I've just started watching this on Netflix. Very interesting show. Okay, <laughs> getting sidetracked again. Let's leave it here. Okay, so now we've got these photos. They are not your photos. They are the most recent photos on Instagram that have been tagged with that one, Norway. And every cache timeout, it will refresh. So if you want to put it on our day or week or every minute, Let's leave it at hour, which means that after an hour, they will go check again and say any new photos that have been hashtagged with Norway. You can choose the photo size, high is the original quality, and this will all depend on how you are going to display it. If you are displaying it like this, you leave it on high. If you're going to put it in a column like only 50%, you should go and reduce it maybe to standard. Number of Instagram posts, let's change this to nine. Let's see what we get then. I'm so worried some photos gonna pop up here that's gonna have some adult content or something. Ah, oh, nice. Very, very nice, Peter. I like this. Okay, so you see. And what, enable captions. So let's go hover over the image so you can see what do we get once you hover over it. The first thing you get is that you get a linking 
option and I will show you soon what the linking option is. The next one is the caption. So the caption is everything that is written here, usually some text, some hashtags, and you can disable that over here. So I'll disable it and now you will see only the comments and the likes will appear. You can also disable these two and then you will only see the images. Updating, now only the images will appear. A little bit weird if there's nothing else, right? So you have to maybe leave something on there, maybe the caption, and you can change the caption length by changing the characters over here. Let's look at the linking options for the photos. This you will only see if you preview it, so I have to update it here. And after update, let's click on the preview. And there we go. Now, if I click on it, it is going to open in Instagram. Let me cancel that and it will show me the actual post. Right. So this is a very nice thing then linking to it and then taking you to it. Of course, most of us will say, why on earth do I want to display other people's photos? It could be that you have some kind of blog and in your blog, you want to include photos related to your blog. Maybe you had traveled to Mongolia and you want to add photos like that, random photos. You don't have your own photos. This could be a nice way of doing it. But the option, the second option that you may want to go for or your client is my photos. And for my photos, you have to add your username or a username, which is also very interesting. You can actually add other people's usernames here, right? You can, you can go and poach some other people's usernames and add it here. It's going to display it. But I'll add my photography one that I haven't paid much attention to for a long time at Saigon Joe. Yes, interesting, right? Where do I come up with Saigon Joe? Let's keep that at six. And so you can see, Black and white is something that I do like. I haven't really posted much in a very, very long time. And it also was just a trial for me. But here you go. Some of my own images. The styling options that you get for your own images or for the tagged photos, they are identical. No differences. Again, you can click on them for a link. You can remove the, the comments and the likes. You can change all of that. Let's look next at the layout settings. As you can see, these photos have different sizes. That means they are in the masonry. What that means is the dimensions that I used for the photo on Instagram is going to be displayed here. So you can see this photo is at a one to one ratio. These are probably, I think it's 16 to nine or maybe that one. This is another one to one. That is how they will be displayed in your masonry view. If you go on grid, it's going to display a preset for the grid. So now all the photos have the same ratios and same sizes. If I go to the style over here under general, I can change the height. So now I can start playing around with how I want these photos to appear for this. I can also increase the margins between them and reduce the margins, even take it out. Right. Those are your general styling options for it. If you have included the caption, the likes, that is, and the comments, these are under meta, the caption, and these are styling options. Styling options, you know by now, is about the color, your topography, your border, your padding, and your margins. Again, um, like I've said with many of the other elements and widgets from JetBlocks, this, as you see here, is good enough. You shouldn't go and try to do too many fancy things with it. This is a very good display. Of course, the masonry is also very nice. Right, switch the masonry and you can, if you want, put it in list, which gives you all these photos under each other like this. I like the grid, but for this one, I actually prefer the masonry even more. To give you then a little bit more flexibility and give people the option to understand this is your Instagram account, you have to create maybe some kind of indicator that this is Instagram. So let's go to the widgets, add an inner section up here, drop it, drop it. And now we've got two columns. I'm going to add one more column. And then my good friend that I truly like, inline SVG. I'm going to bring that in. Why? I want to put an Instagram icon here. And I found my Instagram icon 
my one that I want to look different than everyone else on the noun project.com. So I search for Instagram. You can see all these various images associated with Instagram that you can get. And I downloaded the SVG version. Why? Because I can scale it any size I like. Two, I can change the color within, in, in, within Elementor. And three, it is truly so small. It has almost no impact on the speed of your website. Let me show you. So I click on the SVG here, inline SVG, and I choose my noun Instagram. This is the one I just downloaded. It's going to appear here. Let's go and style it a little bit. I'm going to say cost, custom width. I think it's just a good one to start with and use aspect ratio. Leave that one and I can change the size and I'm going to align it all the way to the left. Drag my columns until I see it starts affecting the size. And then I'm going to use custom color. And let's choose color. I changed my palette a little bit of style. And then from here, I can add things like my Instagram account, my name, and like us and put a link in there. This is the Instagram element from CrocoBlock in their Jet Elements collection. A very, very nice element to add on if you need to use Instagram on your site. If you want to know more about Jet Elements, you can follow the link below to CrocoBlock and you can go check under plugins the Jet Elements alone at this moment, 40 plus widgets that they have in there. And this is growing. There is still a lot of other stuff like Jet Tabs, Jet Tricks, really, really nice. And so much more like Jet Engine and Jet Pop-Up. And then what? What? Under here? Coming soon? Jet Social. So go have a look at CrocoBlock. And then if you are interested in it, they have a very nice pricing system. They have here annual subscriptions. One website is $49. If you go for unlimited websites in a year, that's 79 But if you know you're going to be using them for the years to come, look at this lifetime deal. It is pretty sweet. And these guys are pushing out content like crazy. That is why I really support them, because I like the updates. I like how it comes out. And I like their support on Facebook. People who have issues, leave it on the forum. They get customers and their people to answer it very, very quickly. So please follow the link below if you are interested in CrocoBlocks. It's an affiliate link. So if you do decide to buy it, I will get a little something. You won't pay anything, anything more.